Okay, I'm making this video to show everybody on how to properly gain match and phase match. So there's several steps that you have to take in order to get the correct output that you're uh, desired for. So step one, you will need a at least a DD1 or something to indicate that you are clipping. Um, and you will need a voltmeter. So like your DMM or something to register voltage, preferably a DMM. Uh, we're just going to do four amps. So step one, we'll just say four amps, gain matching and phase matching, all of those. So you have your, say, your DMM over here, right? So you have one, two, three, I know my squares aren't perfect but you get the gist. So you have a positive and negative on each amplifier. Okay, so now, uh, and also let's, uh, let's get a DMM over here, or DD1, we'll just DMM. So this is your DMM, this is your DD1. So now what you're going to do with your DD1 is you are gonna test clipping on each individual amplifier. So hopefully before this, you have checked your clipping on your radio, which SMD has a um, tutorial on how to do that. So with you knowing that you have, you know, where you're clipping at on your, on your head unit, uh, you can set your gains accordingly to what volume you can have it at. So we'll just say, you set it to 35, right? So we'll just say this is rough. So so volume 35, this is where we're keeping it at. All of your speaker inputs will be disconnected from the amplifiers. All of your RCAs will be connected right along with power, right? So these are gonna be your RCAs. So that's connected to cock box or whatever you have. Um, you know, obviously that, then that's going up to your head unit. Uh, so then what we're doing without the subwoofers connected, you turn your volume up to 35, you put it to, I just, I test mine at like 40 Hertz, right? We'll just keep this simple. Volume 35 at 40 Hertz. Okay. So now when you turn your volume up to 35 at 40 Hertz, you're going to have each gain set. So let's say this is the gain knob on your amplifiers. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your DD1 and you're going to test each individual one. So this one here, we tested with a DD1, say your gain starts, your the gain starts clipping at, uh, we'll say half, right? Okay, so then we're gonna say the next one starts clipping just over half. Say the next one clips right around three quarters. And this one's clipping in between there. So now that you have your gain set, so now after you have done that with the DD1 and figured out that at 40 hertz, volume 35, all my amplifiers are now clip free. But now there's an issue. So now with your gain set, your voltage is going to be different on every single one of these amps. So what you're going to do next is you may restart the song make sure that it's in repeat and everything now you're going to go through and take your ddm or dmm and you're going to check each one of these voltages with the volume still at 35 playing 40 hertz do not change those those stay the same so now we're going to check and say okay this one's getting uh we're just going to throw rough numbers out i don't know exact numbers of your amplifiers so we'll just say that this one here is now getting uh we'll say we'll just go 35 volts ac right because coming out of your amplifiers is going to be ac that's where you get the sine wave so now then this one's going to be reading so this one's just up a little bit we'll say that one's reading 40 volts and you got this one this one's reading 45 volts right so now you look at this one okay this one's like turned up just or it's actually sorry i said this one's three quarters and this one's just under so 45 now we're getting 43 volts so now with you having each individual one of these you're going to have each sub playing at a different level 
So what we have to do now is you get the lowest number, lowest voltage that you're getting out of that amplifier after testing with the DD1. And you are going to adjust each one of these knobs. You're not gonna adjust the lowest one. You're gonna leave the lowest one at 35. You're gonna adjust the other three down to 35 volts. So then after you do that, so now you're going to have 35 volts reading off of all of the amplifiers. Now this objective is very difficult to get because these, these uh, gain knobs are very, very touchy. It's so potentiometers, you can move it just the slightest bit, a little bit of a hair, and you will move like a whole three volts or five volts or whatever. So <clears throat> after we have completed gain matching for the voltage side, it's game matching all of this so now all of these are going to be at the playing at the same level well you're not done there because now the subs are they're going to be playing at the same level but they are not going to be in phase so now after you get the subwoofer or the amplifiers in phase all of the or sorry game matched all of them are going to be at 35. so now we've added our set number so now your next objective is is to we're gonna just kind of move this down. We'll draw another four amps here. Positive, negative. Okay, so now same thing. Volume 35 at 40 hertz. Leave that going at on repeat on all of these. In between these steps, maybe give it a little bit of a break because you are gonna be pulling just, it's gonna be doing running a little bit of power so you could potentially have uh, your voltage drop on your actual battery bank um, and kind of let things cool down a little bit. Just let things simmer down. Maybe stop, give it a little bit, let it charge up. Um, I haven't seen drastic drops before, but I've seen a little bit. So now we know, okay, we are uh, gain matched. All the amps are reading this. Now, what's happening is when I mean phase match is you need to match these sine waves up. So what I mean by that is, um, we'll bring the paper down here. Now a sine wave, you're gonna say you're playing uh, 40 Hertz, right? So this is a sine wave, okay? So you have your, your scale here and Anything below this is your is the negative part of the sine wave, and this is the positive part of the sine wave. So what's going to happen is, is you have one amplifier playing at this time. It's this time constant. So when you have one amplifier playing at this, say, uh, let's go, this is a 40 hertz sine wave. I know it's not exact, but gives you an estimate. So you have one playing at that. Now you throw another one in, and now the other one could be playing here. So now that is that is out of phase. So then you have another one that's going to be playing, uh, say, here. So now you have four. Oh, uh, that's the. Let's throw another one in there, even though you guys understand the gist. Now you have four subs playing out of phase. So that means that you're gonna have you're gonna have these weird. So as a sub's gonna play, they're gonna be going like this, trying to stay in phase. So all you're doing now at this point is you're lining these phases, these sine waves up. You're lining these up so they all play at the exact same time. So they all line up and look exactly like this. Now the best way to do this is with an oscilloscope. Now, I personally do not have an oscilloscope. The easiest way to do without oscilloscope and to do with uh, just kind of the things that you have in your household or whatever. If you're a bass head, you probably have a speaker laying around. I personally have bought a 10 inch Planet Audio. Uh, it's gotta be dual voice coil. Uh, it was like 20 bucks shipped to my door from Amazon. So I purchased this sub. You know, what, what I'm going to do here, this is gonna be a little confusing. So I'm gonna use that sub to get my phase lined up. So now here is how we will do that with a subwoofer. So now you have this sub, right? So 
This is, my drawing's terrible, but you guys understand. So here's the magnet, whatever. Yeah, looks like a little hat or something. So throw some terminals on there. So you were gonna have a positive and negative from each side of the speaker. So what you're going to do with this now, after setting all this up, you're gonna turn your volume back up to 35 or whatever your clip is on your head unit. Then you're going to set back to that 40 Hertz tone or honestly this, you can really use something that gets the speaker moving because that, I guess this 40 Hertz doesn't necessarily matter. So I like to use something that gets the speaker really moving um, and you don't need to crank it up because obviously it's a low speaker on some either giant amps or whatever. Uh, I've used 20 Hertz in the past. It seems to be fine. You can use 30, you can use 25. Uh, we'll just say I'm gonna use 20 Hertz because that's what I've always done in the past. So we're gonna turn it up, turn it to a 20 Hertz sine wave. Or it plays constant, put it on repeat at volume 35, this is crucial. So now, um, I am wrong. Do not turn up the volume 35. It will blow the shit out of the sun. Turn it up to a little bit to where you actually feel the speaker move. So now what you're going to do is you're gonna take the positive from this side and you're gonna turn, put it on to this amp from one coil. You're gonna take the negative and you're gonna hook it up to this amp, okay? Now this is the tricky part. In order to get this correct, at a low volume, I was I was wrong. Do not put it at 35. Uh, I was so you put it at 20 hertz sign or uh, on a repeat sine wave. You are going to take the other side of this coil, and you're going to reverse the polarities. So you're going to take the positive, and you're going to connect it in to negative. You're going to take the negative, and you're going to connect it into positive. Now, what I like to do also before I do this step is I turn the phases to, because it goes zero to 180 normally, right? So you normally have a phase of zero to 180. So, and this is what your potentiometer will look like. You have a little dot here. I like to take this amp and I like to just kind of bump it up just a little bit. You can go a quarter or you can go half. Um, I haven't seen any difference in testing wise and number wise of, of doing it different. I've tried it down at zero, I've tried it at half. The reason why I like to do it at half is because sometimes when you're moving along on these other amps, well, you have this one down right here and all of a sudden you're still out of phase, it's still moving. So set all of your phase gain or all of your phase knobs to about half. Now at a low volume, say like volume two or so, until you can get the speaker to start moving, um, with it connected to these speed, to these amplifiers, very, very lightly turn up the volume just a little bit. Put this on repeat. Now this is going to take you a long time to be able to set it. So you're gonna to wanna to put this on repeat at a low volume. Make sure the bass knob is turned up too. So now what you're gonna be feeling is this sub is going to be moving. And what you're feeling is, is you have this amp telling this, this coil to move and this coil or this amp telling this coil to move. And what's happening is the reason why you're feeling this subwoofer move is because you're feeling it played this frequency and then you're feeling it, it played this frequency. So that means that it's out of phase. So these two amps right here are telling the sub to do two different things. So then you're gonna feel the sub move like it's moving at like a 20 Hertz tone, which is not good. So that's how you know that your amps are out of phase. Then what you're going to do with your phase knob, you're going to leave this as your amp. So we're gonna call this amp the master amp and the rest of these guys are going to be your sl your slaves so we'll just say your slave amps right so you're going to leave the master right at half on the 180 you're going to turn this phase you're going to just adjust it turn it up and you're going to have a, your hand on the sub cone and you're going to feel the cone move and as you turn to this knob the phase knob you're going to feel the sub either move more and then all of a sudden it's gonna go down to about nothing to where the sub doesn't move at all. And what's happening is, is you're putting that in phase so that you're slowly adjusting the sine wave to line up with the other one. 
so then therefore this sine wave so that technically also that's the reason why you don't turn the volume up which is that where i was incorrect and in when i said this was crucial the volume 35 is crucial. do not do that so what's happening is you're basically like dead shorting that uh you're just locking that coil up and what it is it's generating a ton of heat because the power the, the coil doesn't have way to move so after you get this amplifier set to where your subwoofer stops moving you need to remove these leads only from this amp. So we're gonna remove the leads only from this amp. Try to keep it at the same volume as well. So say if you have it set at like volume two or five or 10 or whatever gets the sub to move, try to leave it at that volume. So now you're gonna keep these leads connected. So now what you're gonna do next, now this one is done, check. We're done, these two are in phase. Now we need to get the other two in phase. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these leads and you're gonna take the positive, hook it up to the negative, take the negative, hook it up to the positive. And you're going to do the exact same thing as what you did on this amp. So you're gonna turn this um, phase knob up until you feel the subwoofer stop moving. Once you get it to stop moving, it, to, what I do as well is I'll turn it up it stops moving, I'll go a little bit more and you feel it move more and then you go back and you feel it stop and then you go past and you feel it start moving again. Get it lined up as best you can to where this subwoofer stops moving. Now obviously you start seeing smoke come out of this bad boy, you might wanna cool it because that's your testing device. So now after you get this amp done, now you're like, okay, sub stop moving, this amp's good. Now you, these three amps are now in phase. This amp is done. Now remove the leads from this amplifier. Now the leads are removed from this amplifier. And now you have to phase match the last amp. What do you know? It's the exact same thing. So you're gonna take your positive, hook it up to the negative, take your negative and hook it up to the positive. And you're gonna do the same exact thing and adjust your phase until the subwoofer stops moving. Now, once the subwoofer stops moving and you have completed gain matching and you have completed phase matching, now your amps uh, will play exactly the same. Next step would be using a CC1 to adjust your uh, crossovers on your amplifier so that way those are all in sync. So you don't have some subs being cut off at certain frequencies and blah, blah, blah. But this way is the best way without having the correct tools, best way to set up your amps gain matching and phase matching. Hopefully that helped you guys. Uh, this took me a long time to figure out. There's an awesome video of uh, bear vids that made, um, kind of showed everybody how to do this method. And this method has worked phenomenal. I've seen massive gains come out of this. I've tested it to where I've uh, not phase matched and then you phase match, I've gained over a dB. So this is crucial. Boom, just like that guys. Step by step, do not miss any of these steps, okay? We'll go over it again. Step one, DD1, each amp. Check each voltage. Sometimes it helps to write it down. Check e each voltage, adjust each voltage to equal the same, all 35. After that's completed, keeping volume 35 at 40 hertz, turn the volume down, put it on 20 hertz, adjust your phase up so that way it's not um, maxed out or all the way down. Take your master amp, pick an amp, doesn't matter which one, have the phase set positive and negative, hooked up normally to your testing sub, then go through and do uh, reverse polarities on the other side of the coil to each amp and adjust your phase so they line up so you stop having this ugly mess and you have this beautiful sine wave.